Okay. Okay. I was wrong. I admit it. I really didn't want to like GeForce Now, if I'm really honest. But now having tried GeForce Now 3080 tier for the past week, I've got to say, I'm a little blown away. I mean, hey, look, it's not perfect. I still have some gripes, but yeah, GeForce Now 3080 tier is incredible. Let me tell you why. I'm a big advocate of cloud gaming, having tested Project xCloud out in its very early beta form, what, nearly three years ago, and loving my experience on Stadia. Such a shame. But whatever you think, whatever you may have heard about cloud gaming, trust me, cloud gaming works. And in my experience, it works really well. Now, does it work like that for everyone? No. In my experience with cloud gaming, it's generally, and this mostly been with Stadia, and now with xCloud, it's been pretty good, especially with Stadia, the experience was really, really good. But Stadia's no more, or certainly won't be in January. Now I'm taking a look at GeForce Now 3080 tier. I've heard a lot of stuff about it, but I've kind of ignored it up to here but it's probably worth giving you some background so you know where I'm coming from when I talk about GeForce Now and 3080. I know how to get the best out of cloud gaming. I mean, I'm fully wired in, you know, this includes my smart TV. I, I try not to use Wi-Fi whenever I'm cloud gaming, obviously, except on mobile. If you're gonna cloud game, then really, an ethernet connection where possible is gonna give you the best experience. In terms of broadband, I get about 55 megabits per second download speed. So that's not massive. You know, many of my friends and colleagues, you know, get a gigabit plus and my ping to the server is pretty low. But I have found that that kind of 50 megabits per second kind of mark is absolutely ample to get, as was on Stadia, 4K 60 frames per second. It's probably worth understanding my approach to gaming as well, just to provide this GeForce Now 38 review with some context, okay? So when it comes to gaming, look, I'm a console gamer at heart. I'm not part of the PC master race. I prefer a console-like experience. You know, I like using a controller. I like a game that works straight out of the box, even if it's a virtual box in the cloud. You know, I like a complete ecosystem where the controller and the user experience and the games are all sort of contained in one and all designed together. No fiddling with graphic settings or, or wondering whether I have the right graphics card or whether the controller I have will function with this game in the right way across all the ways I play. I don't have loads of PC or Steam library games. So when GeForce Now launched initially, I was a bit meh. You know, this is cloud gaming for PC nerds, surely, I thought. You know, I tried the GeForce Now free beta version when it first launched, but, you know, the idea of queues, limited play sessions, signing into my Steam or Epic account every time I want to play, I just want to press a couple of buttons and play the game. And so that initial cloud experience with GeForce Now beta was so-so. Uh, so if I'm honest, I was very happy with Stadia and I dismissed GeForce Now as, you know, not for me, too fiddly. And I just carried on with my cloud gaming experience, as I say, with Stadia and now with Xbox Cloud Gaming. As I say, Stadia for me was an awesome experience. Um, why would I need anything else? Well, that escalated quickly. So now it's mainly Xbox Cloud Gaming that I kind of tend to do. So why the change of heart when it comes to GeForce Now? Why the about turn? Simple, the GeForce Now 3080 tier. GeForce Now kindly set me up with a 3080 tier and said, you know, off you go, let's know what you think. <sighs> why not? I thought, you know, it's been a while, I've got nothing to lose, but I wasn't expecting much. Even though many of my sort of friends who, you know, cloud game and have been using GeForce Now 3080 tier have been singing its praises. You know, I just dismissed that as, well, you know, it's just not for me. You know, it's too much focused on PC gamers. I'm a console gamer. 
So how did I find the experience using GeForce Now 3080? Sure, look, initially that whole signing into the Steam account to play Destiny 2 was a pain and setting up my EA Origin account with my Steam account so I could play Apex is a pain. But look, please note, this was the first time I used or played these games and that's what's involved in that initial setup. But then when Destiny 2 loaded in, it was like WTF. Like, it was noticeably better than any Destiny 2 experience I've had. I thought Stadia was good. I remember the first time I played Destiny 2 on Stadia and I was blown away. But GeForce Now 3080 tier, the visuals, the sound quality, the response on the GeForce Now 3080 tier, just, I'm going to be honest, it just blew me away. There, I said it. Look, I'm not sitting here with two versions of the game running on two different platforms and a magnifying glass in hand, forensically comparing the, the, the two games, you know, next to each other to see which performs best. This is from memory. I instantly noticed a difference in the visuals and the sound, especially the sound and, and the feel of the game. And I, I just instantly it was that good. I, I, I don't need a side-by-side -side forensic analysis to know how good it was. it was. It was just plain to see. The same was true of Apex Legends. You know, I, look, I get it now, PC Master Race. I understand, I see the visual quality. Apex Legends, in my experience, is a really quick, twitchy game. And there was certainly no sluggishness at all when I was playing via the GeForce Now PC app. It felt the best it had ever felt and looked, well, better than back in the day when I used to play on the Xbox One natively, obviously. This is like gaming on a gaming PC. Roller Champions, again, very smooth, super fast and responsive. I can't say enough about the PC experience of GeForce Now 3080 tier. Not just graphically though, in terms of audio, and probably more importantly, response. You know, I'm playing with a, a wired controller and to be honest, it was, it was bang on. Look, Let's be very clear. I'm talking specifically here, when, you know, in terms of GeForce Now, about the 3080 tier, the top GeForce Now tier. It offers up to 120 frames per second. Session length is eight hours. I mean, that's plenty for most gamers. There's no queues and you're getting 4K 60 frames per second or 1440p at 120 frames per second on PC and Mac and up to 4K and 60 HDR frames per second on Shield. And just announced when I was making this video on the Samsung TV Gaming Hub, you can now get native 4K. Now I don't have the Samsung, I have an LG. But as I say, with the LG, the LG comes with the GeForce Now uh, WebOS Smart TV app built in. So I tried it on that. Using the LG TV GeForce Now app, it's a bit more clunky experience in terms of the front end, you know. After all, GeForce Now is really designed with the PC in mind. After all, it is effectively a gaming PC in the sky. It's not a sort of a virtual console or anything like that. So signing in into a game on, on a TV is a pain in the butt, especially if you're just using controller. And then to have to sign into the relative PC library is, is another annoyance. But I didn't have to do this on subsequent sessions of that particular game. I guess you're just going to have to do that with each new game library you introduce or perhaps each new game. But if you go back to games regularly, well, you straight in after that initial kind of sign in. You don't have to keep doing it. And this is a great improvement with GeForce Now. It remembers your Steam account and your Epic account, etc. So as I say, second and subsequent times, the experience of start starting up a game is much more smooth. But... What about gameplay and visuals on the TV? Well, the LG TV is one of the best gaming TVs out there. And once again, firing up Destiny 2, the visuals and response were amazing. I was using an Xbox controller connected to the LG TV via Bluetooth. Sometimes I did feel a very slight initial latency and lag, but I think that's more to do with the controller slash Bluetooth connection than GeForce Now. And my perception of that soon dissipated. And on another occasion, I didn't really notice it at all. And hey, when testing out Fortnite, a game I don't play, so don't judge me, 
and I refused to build in it. You know, I came in third and got, you know, kills off loads of sweaty teens. So for me, that, you know, that was pretty good. While I was only getting, you know, 60 frames per second with the GeForce Now app, the 3080 tier combined with the AI in the LG TV, so the picture processing that comes with the LG TV, make sure that that experience is super smooth. Once again, noticeably better than even, and I'm going to say this, and people who know me and know my sort of, you know, fandom for Stadia are going to be shocked. Yes, even better than my Stadia experience, which was very, very good. And I'll be curious to see what the new Samsung Gaming Hub experience that offers 4K 60 frames per second now is like. Samsung, if you're watching, please feel free to send me a brand new TV. I also tested it out on my Chromecast with Google TV dongle. Again, connecting the Xbox to the Chromecast via Bluetooth. But visually, still super, super impressive. But it's hats off to the LG. It edges it here in terms of visuals. The LG TV app just needs a better front end. So, you know, GeForce Now, LG, get together, make a better front end. My experience on the phone is equally impressive. Again, logging into relevant PC library, etc., is initially a pain, but visually, as expected, you know, on a smaller screen, it looks brilliant. It looks stunning. If anything, the 3080 is overkill here, unless you have a top end phone with 120 hertz refresh rate or a top end tablet. But what about the games? When GeForce Now was initially in beta for a very limited trial, Virtually any PC game, if you owned it, was playable. But when it went properly public, publishers started withdrawing some of their consent to allow those games to be playable. So currently GeForce Now has an opt-in for publishers who just want to make their games available to play via GeForce Now. They just say, yep, yeah, fine, tick a box and Bob's your uncle. But what that does mean is you have a massive selection with over 1,400 full PC games. But there are some noticeable exceptions and some from some big publishers. There's no GTA, no Call of Duty, no FIFA 23, no Overwatch, no PUBG. You get the picture. Activision slash Blizzard and Take-Two are being cautious about their approach to GeForce Now, clearly. But then there are things like, you know, Fortnite, Apex Legends, Destiny 2, CSGO, Assassin's Creed, Battlefield 1, Battlefield V, Ubisoft games, hundreds of indie games, loads of free to play titles, and they're also adding loads of demos. So it's definitely a case of quantity over quality, but there are enough major AAA games and great award-winning indie games and curiosities and everything in between to keep most gamers happy. But let's just say it's not curated, but, but the choice is very, very wide. In terms of the cloud gaming business model, I get it, I appreciate it. Being able to play the PC games you already own is a massive benefit and makes a lot of sense to many people who own a lot of PC games or, you know, a lot of games in their Steam library. But as I mentioned earlier, I don't have a library of PC games. I prefer a subscription model like Games Pass or the ideal combo that Stadia had of being able to buy games and having a curated library through the subscription. So, It'll take a lot to wean me off that approach. But having experienced the GeForce Now 3080 tier, it's tempting to start buying some games, those that I really want to play that aren't in Xbox Game Pass, but are on PC. So I can now play via GeForce Now 3080 tier. And certainly being able to play things like Destiny 2 and Apex Legends and Fortnite at the visual quality and gameplay that 3080 tier offers is awesome. But look, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. As I said at the beginning, this is effectively a gaming PC in the cloud. And so the user experience is going to come from that perspective, PC users. When you look at the GeForce Now library of games, it's not actually their store or library of games. Strictly speaking, these games aren't being released directly by, you know, the GeForce Now library or to the GeForce Now platform per se. Not like, say, when you look at games on a console or on Stadia. 
With GeForce Now, you're, you're merely being provided access to existing PC games via specific libraries. So there's always going to be that slight added layer. And that's a key distinction from, say, a console model where it's all self-contained. So sometimes, for instance, if I came out of a game or I changed my mind as I was signing into a library or a game, I didn't always revert back to the GeForce Now front end. Or when I was playing on the TV, there didn't seem to be like a, an obvious way to kind of hit the home button or, you know, I didn't know what the home button was and things like that, to go back to sort of to the GeForce homepage. And that's going to depend on what controller you're using as well. However, you know, I get it. If you're used to gaming on PC and you're used to signing into your Steam accounts and your Epic accounts and similar things like that, every time you want to play or you use different controllers or keyboard and mouse, then it's probably not an issue for you. And in fairness, it's not all like this. And some libraries are super seamless. When I played Fortnite, I made sure that my Epic account was linked to my GeForce Now account in the settings beforehand. So when I went to play Fortnite, Boom, straight in. This is the kind of experience I want. But for me, for someone who's gamed on a console most of his life, it's still a pain when I have that little extra layer of signing in and coming out of a game back to GeForce Now. For instance, I had to go to the Ubisoft Connect to get the free to play version of Roller Champions, then go back to GeForce Now. But I can see that GeForce Now is kind of working on this user experience. Fortnite being an example, and the fact that once you're signed into Steam, for instance, you don't have to repeat that verification process each time. And that does make it feel more seamless, you know, to reduce the button presses and logins required. And for me, this gives a much better overall experience. And then once you're in, playing the game on 3080 tier, wow, like it is impressive. So my big tip, make sure that you've done all the signing in and linking accounts to your GeForce Now account for the various games and publishers that you regularly use up front for that kind of best seamless experience. It's well worth that initial sort of time investment of connecting all those things. And you can do this in the settings. So let's talk about the price. Now I've tasted 3080. I'm going to be honest, it's hard to drop down just to priority. You know what they say, once you've had silk, cotton will never do and all that. But even at priority, you're still getting up to 1080, 60 frames per second. So depending on what sort of screen you're using and stuff, that should be fine. Price breakdown, the features for GeForce Now are all as here. Yeah, $19.99 a month for the 3080 tier with no sort of library, no subscription library is a lot. And as subs go, it's pricey. But you're paying for an RTX 3080 gaming PC experience. So if you already have an existing PC library, but say have an old gaming PC, then this is probably of more value to you than if you don't. And if you game a lot and visuals and frames per second are crucial to you and you don't have a powerful gaming PC, then again, this makes a lot of sense. At the end of the day, it's a, a lifestyle choice, you know, $19.99 may not be a lot to someone, maybe a lot more to somebody else. Look, I'll admit it. I've become a true convert to GeForce Now 3080 tier, almost. In so much as will I make it my sole cloud gaming experience? No, not 100%. But when it comes to cloud gaming, the entry cost is so low for the various options that you have. So you don't need to, and you shouldn't just rely on one platform. We, we moved on from the console wars way of thinking when it was a like a $500 choice between one console or the other. With cloud gaming, you can have a suite of platforms that you choose to use. And the GeForce 3080 tier is now firmly in my suite of platforms. I'm so glad I was given an opportunity to revisit GeForce Now albeit at the top end tier, the 3080 tier, which without a shadow of a doubt, visually and gameplay wise, is the best in class in terms of cloud gaming. So good that to some degree, I'm happy to overlook some of the clunky signing in experience inherent in PC gaming via libraries. And the fact that it's not a self-contained gaming platform like a console. Overall, my experience on 
PC with the GeForce, GeForce Now PC app was marginally better than via the TV app. But the TV did look amazing. And it probably looks even better on the Samsung now they've got 4K 60 frames per second. And, you know, this experience could be the difference between playing with a wired as opposed to Bluetooth controller. But it's still, whatever platform you use, whether it's via the TV or your PC, it's a really impressive experience. So, lesson learned. Don't let your first experience put you off. Experiment with different cloud gaming platforms and don't be too blinded by brand loyalty. This is not console war gaming. Find the one that suits you or more than one and admit it as I'm doing right now when your assumptions are wrong. GeForce Now 38 tier is mind-blowingly good and I was wrong to dismiss it. Well, I hope you found this useful. I hope you found it interesting. Check the link below for more details and sign up to GeForce Now as well. I'll probably have some sort of link down there. And of course, hit the likes because I like it. YouTube likes it and it helps people like you find great content like this. And if you are new here, do me the massive honor of hitting that subscribe button, toggling that notification bell. And that way you'll know when I go live with content like this. Thanks for your time. And hey, while you're at it, why don't you check out some of the videos right over here? I think you'll find them interesting, especially if you like this one. Check them out. I, my videos are brilliant. You've got to check them out. It's appreciated. Go on. Thanks.